Good morning. It's Friday, June 19th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Empty Spaces That Tell a Story, and our scripture is Acts chapter 5. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, The jail was securely locked, with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were all perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. It's not a difficult thing to picture the look of surprise on the faces of the temple guards when they arrived at the empty jail cell and imagine the thoughts that flashed through their minds. Uh, they were there, the cell's still locked. What the? I'm going to get fired for this. What are these guys, magicians, ghosts? Am I going nuts? We can also hear the laughter of heaven as all the angels are gathered around God's 148-inch flat-screen monitor watching it all unfold. I can imagine the email they'd all gotten the night before. Hey, angels, you don't want to miss this. We're going to pull a spoof on the Romans. Watch it live tomorrow morning. What a hoot! <laughs> well... Those are always my first thoughts reading this passage. And if you're entertained by the good guys making a miraculous escape, you're also pleased to read this passage. But it's easy to miss the message about what a miracle really means, especially when God plays David Copperfield and makes an apostle disappear. Poof! We wonder, how do he do that? Where'd they go? The real story is not the how, but the why. And then the what. How God does stuff is always God's business. Answering the why and the what, that's our task in learning how to stay connected with God's plans for bringing praise and glory to Jesus. So, let's consider the why of this miracle. Just like the grave couldn't hold Jesus, when God has something he wants accomplished, titanium bars, security systems constructed by CPI or Brinks mean nothing. God will release anyone he wishes and imprison those who get in the way of God's brand of justice. The real key to understanding what happened here is the what. And that is where discipleship rubber meets the cultural road. Cutting to the chase, simply, God wanted to elevate the game of the disciples' impact on the life of people worshiping at that temple. He wanted Peter and the others to have a platform. But there's a secondary understanding we don't want to miss about miracles here. If you watch any religious TV broadcasting, miracles are a hot ticket. And although God usually gets the credit, the effect is much more about our comfort. The so-called prayer that got through and brought this great big blessing is the preacher's hook of promise. And he uses that lure to draw in more donations. The bait on the hook is the idea that if you'll just believe, God will give you what you want. But that is just plain manipulative, both from the standpoint of the quote-unquote evangelist who's dangling anything that might stir up your greed to have something, and his characterization of a God who can be manipulated by humans with the right kind of handling. In short, the evangelist's message is, you too can be David Copperfield. Let's pray together. Father, we're sometimes stunned by our carnal appetites and the lengths to which we can sink to satisfy all our wants. 
Help us to remember what our Lord taught, that to truly follow him, our understanding of miracles has to be praised that your will is being carried out, and our part is to deny self in favor of picking up a cross. For you today, I call it the prayer of the pink Cadillac, this tendency to believe in miracles so you can hold on to the hope of being rich in this life. The problem with that pink luxury car prayer it makes you poor in eternity. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.